slave trading. But uh, I'm gonna try and get all, all that uh, ASAP so you guys can go out and get some hands on instead because obviously this lecture is mostly for team leaders and squad leaders. But I thought it was nice that you guys got to know what it is your squad leader is supposed to do and what your team leader is supposed to do. And um, so, uh, so you do, uh, so you know what to expect uh, when we do this uh, when we do these ranges, and so you understand why some of the information you have to give out is important uh, to the squad and your platoon. Okay. First off, um, uh, for, for the squad leader, he has a bunch of uh, jobs. I'm gonna give you a few of them, but um, just so you know what his job actually is. First off, his job is that he's responsible for what the squad does and fails to do. And he's a tactical lead who leads by, leads by example. Um, that's a bit cryptical, but it means that whatever you guys do within his squad, that's his responsibility. So if you guys step around, if you guys fuck around, if you guys do something wrong, that's his responsibility and I'm going to be uh, on the squad leader for that. And that's not fair. So, so in order to be a good player in UO, you want to be nice to your squad leader. And you want to do exactly what he tells you because it's his responsibility and this, it's his ass if... Uh, is something that doesn't go right, it's not the squad's fault, so to speak. Um, what the squad leader also does is um, he gives uh, reports to the platoon leader on anything from uh, casualties to uh, missing equipment to um, clothing. Uh, Ace reports is submitted to the platoon sergeant. Uh, throughout the mission he, in, he submits reports to platoon leader and platoon sergeant. Um, and he, he delegates tasks to his team leaders and that's important because the squad leader isn't the guy as we sometimes teach he isn't the guy in the sense of the formation that everyone rallies around that's not his job his job is to tell the team leaders what he wants their teams to do so um, think of a squad as just uh, two teams working together with the squad leader telling them what to do so teams are actually independent you don't say squad line and then form up on squad leader you say squad, uh, squad line team one is base and then team two forms up on team one squad leader can go wherever he wants because that's not the point <laughs> he's not there to show people where to stand he's just there to tell the teams the teams how to form up um, furthermore um, squad leader is such a high level position that since he has a whole squad, he can he's one of the people that can actually use initiative in absence of orders. So if the platoon leader doesn't tell him what to do, he can tell the platoon leader, I'm going to do this now. Um, so he's one few people that can actually tell a leader what he's doing, if he doesn't get an order to do anything else. Um, but that's only in absence of orders, it's not like uh, um, he can just do whatever he wants. But if he doesn't get told what to do, and he's in contact. Then he, then he figures out what he's, what he thinks is, thinks is best. Um, he follows the platoon leader's plans and make recommendation in line with the, him using initiative. He also say, "Hey, platoon leader, we can do this instead. This is much easier." And platoon leader can say yes or no. Um, um, during movement, um, not too relevant for, uh, for armor. Yes, that's just uh, a short. Uh, I have a long list of his jobs uh, posted in uh, platoon operations SOPs. More shit's coming in there in time. Um, but in short, in game, uh, uh, what what his job is is to keep me informed, keep platoon sergeant informed, um, take responsibility for you guys, make recommendations, delegate tasks to team leaders, and follow the plan. Uh, follow the plan. Out of game, he still keep me or Falcon informed of uh, how the squad's doing. If someone needs to, uh, if someone in the squad needs to be rotated around, you talk to him. If you have a guy on your team that's an idiot or is inactive or something, then you tell the squad lead so uh, he can figure out what to do. And um, so I won't have to manage everything and um, so forth. Um, but that's just quickly really the squad leader's job. And then I'm going to tell, tell you quickly about um, planning and understanding operational orders and mid TC and formations. It's going to be pretty brief. Go ahead. I just got a, I got a quick comment on what you just said. Mm -hmm. We tried that in game last night. I can't remember who I was with. It was one of the regulars, and I was the squad lead, and I didn't manage the squad. 
the 2IC, which was in charge of one of the fire teams, he managed the whole squad. And man, did it work good. It was thick and it was all movies. It was all people I, I've never gamed with before. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, yeah, the squad leader, he is the tactical guy. So he's the guy that uh, communicates with other squads with the um, support elements, with the platoon leader. And that's enough. That's a lot of people to talk to. He doesn't need eight more guys saying, what are we supposed to do now? So he only needs those extra two team leaders and only needs to talk to them. And then they manage everything else. If he says team uh, team one or team alpha, I want you set set up security from the nine o'clock to the three o'clock. Okay, then they're just setting up, and he won't have to do anything else. And then uh, once they report they're done, he might check if they're properly placed according to what he wanted, but he does, won't have to do anything else. And then he can just say to the team lead, "I'm not happy about your AR. Set him over there instead." Where the team leaders then manage uh, those four guys. Uh, and that's from the principle, uh, there's a high level principle saying you don't, if you're in a command position, you don't want to have to deal with more than five people. Because if you talk to more than five people at the same time, your brain's going to overflow and you're not going to be able to fill the information out. Uh, and that's an important point for the tune leaders too, that you don't want to have more than eight, uh, five elements reporting to you. Then you want to delegate out, so say, uh, platoon side and hell, that shit, I can't do that. Yeah, exactly. We're not women. <laughs> okay. So, um, uh, just 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 quick and inf informative part. I'm gonna go over pretty quickly, and uh, I've made reading materials available. You can read that here too, if uh, you want to go more in depth about it. But it's just a quick brief. Um, I posted a link uh, to my Google Doc. So. When you receive a mission or receive orders, uh, that goes for fire team leader and uh, and um, squad leader and platoon leader and so forth. That you that you can receive a mission and then there is something called the decision cycle, and that's from you find out what you're supposed to do to you can put it into action. And um, the faster you can do this, the more effective a leader you become. So first thing is you receive a mission, then immediately from that you issue a, what's called a warning order. And that's saying uh, a warning order is pretty si is a pretty simple thing. That's just um, that's just saying, are there any changes in the situation? What's our mi uh, what's our mission most likely going to be? And are there any other changes to uh, the general points of an op order? And that's it. That's uh, it's just saying, hey guys, we might uh, get a mission to set up a CP, or we might get to uh, set up security facing north. That's just a warning order. That's just saying that real quick. So people can prepare themselves, so team leaders can say, okay guys, um, if we're do going to do this, we need this and that. Um, meanwhile, you make a tentative plan. You find out how you might want to do this um, as, as you go. Then you initiate movement. You start moving towards your objective area. Um, if, if possible, you conduct reconnaissance. You find out uh, how it's done, mostly on platoon level, squad level. You don't really have time to do reconnaissance. It's just get up there. Uh, maybe you want to send one team ahead so they can get fucked up and th then you still save one team, maybe. Um, then after recon, you complete your plan. Recon can also just be watching a map saying, yeah, that's about it. Um, but then you complete your ca plan and then you issue your final orders or your final up order. And uh, that can be done pretty simply since you're, if you're on a squad or team level, because you can just say one situation, nothing new, two mission, nothing new, execution, I want you there, I want you there, I want you there, four, uh, four nothing new, five, nothing new. So it can be pretty easy to give a squad leader's up order, and you don't have to do it that way. You can just say, you can just explain the execution, um, and then you uh, you supervise, and that's it. That's uh, the decision cycle, and uh, faster you can uh, do these steps more effective you become and that's something you guys want to think about that's why your squad leader can't tell you immediately what to do because he needs to figure out what he wants to do he might have to do recon by the map or actual recon he might have to complete his plan and then put it into action okay um yes so um any questions so far I might be uh, overstepping my bounds here. No questions, okay, nice and easy. Um, then there's a, a, something called MedTC that all leaders should know and all grunts should know this. So 
they understand what affects a leader's decision. And MedTC is um, is what whatever you think about whenever you're executing a mission, you have to think about MedTC, and that's an acronym meaning mission analysis, enemy terrain, troops, time, and civil con uh, considerations. And that's something you always want to think about. So mission analysis is um, what are we supposed to have? is uh, facts, assumptions, tasks, limitations, and uh, enemy most likely course of action and the uh, most dangerous course of action. So that's just what are we supposed to do? What's been happening before? What might happen? Uh, what can we do? Uh, what sh should we do? What's the enemy going to do? And what's uh, most dangerous that the enemy is going to do? Then uh, the enemy. Where, what's the enemy doing? What's he do? Where's he moving now? Where will he take up position? And uh, if we engage the enemy, what will they do? How's the enemy in size and comp uh, composition? Uh, what's the enemy's intent? That's something he wants to think about. So if you have rel uh, relevant information about the enemy, you always want to give your squad leader that, so he can, or your team leader that, so he knows what's uh, what's happening. Then there's terrain and weather. Pretty obvious. You can't. Uh, uh, some things you just can't, uh, can't do if you're in the wrong piece of terrain. You can't set up a battle position in the middle of an open field and expect to survive that for long. For instance, um, troops and support. Uh, what? Uh, how many troops do we have within uh, the squad? And what can we call on for support? Do we have a weapon squad? Do we have mortars? Uh, whatever. And how can we? Uh, how fast can we expect that to support us? Uh, and are there any restrictions to the support? Um, that's something you need to think about. Time is always an uh, important factor. Um, I'm just skipping through the T's now real fast. Sorry about that. Um, but then there's time. And time is what's uh, fucking most squad leaders up. Because um, when they issue a warning order, or when they get, a, uh, get an order from the platoon leader, or get a warning order from the platoon leader, they usually don't have much time before the platoon leader has decided, okay, I'm going to do this, and then say, to the squad leader, execute this plan, and then the squad leader hasn't even had time to do his decision cycle sometimes, so sometimes he, he gets fucked up a lot on his timetable, so you want to try and give him time to do his, uh, and to make his plan before you bombard him with questions, because he hasn't had a lot of time to think about this often, and this is why I, I hate squad leading, because from the platoon leader giving me in order to I have to put it into practice, it's usually too short time for me. And I can't, uh, it, it fucks me up. Uh, final considerations are civil considerations. If we're in a, in a terrain with the civilians, then we need to consider those um, and the laws of, uh, to, according to the laws of war and our rules of engagement. Um, so that's MET CC. Um, something all leaders should think about and all privates should know. Some of the other way around, some, something all uh, leaders should know and privates should think about. Um, the operational order. I posted um, a template for an operational order in uh, in my Google Doc. There, I'm not going to go over it. Um, that's more more for the squad leaders' uh, reference. Um, uh, so yeah. Any questions so far about decision cycles? And shit. Okay. So um, this guy's going to be quickly the squad leader and his actions in combat, and the squad's actions in combat, because we tried this a little uh, on the first uh, fight team course where I, uh, where, I, and where I taught and where I acted as a squad leader, and that happened pretty, pretty well, so this is just um, to tell you what you should actually expect from your squad leader in combat, because what's most likely going to happen when you get in combat is the squad leader is just going to scream at the team leaders in, um, that are in contact and sell, uh, ask them, I need a, I need a contact report from you guys. I need to know how many enemies there are and where they are, and how are you going to act uh, uh, act on them. It's, he's going to ask you for this all the time, and that's because he has to assess: Can I? How can I handle this task? Can I uh, assault with what I have? Can I only defend, can, or do I have to fall back? Uh, and how could I use the platoon in this fight? So he's not concerned too much about. The actual fight he's, uh, that the squad is in, he's concerned about how can other elements influence the fight and how can his own elements inf influence the fight. So he's going to need a lot of uh, contact reports from you guys, he's going to need accurate ones. So you're not going to say, oh, I'm engaged by a platoon just to fuck him up. You say, 
you say, okay, I have a team minus because I see two guys. That's a team minus. Uh, I have a squad, uh, squad plus because there's more than 10 guys out there. Okay. And only what you see, not uh, anything else. Okay, anyways. Um, um, so, just like you had with your fire team, you have some actions on contact. Uh, if you get engaged by the enemy, you form line and you um, suppress. And then, um, once you're there, the team leader and makes some tactical decisions. Uh, what he does in the, when he's in the squad, he makes uh, is pretty much the same, and then he identifies: is it best for the team to assault, to stay in base of fire, or to go uh, or to go defensive to get out of there? And that's uh, the difference here is that he doesn't do this automatically. Now he tells the squad leader what he's doing. Uh, maybe if he feels that he can only save his team by either assaulting or falling back immediately, then that's what he does. He says. I'm engaged by one times enemy squad to a front, I'm falling back. Okay, the team, a squad leader can deal with that, but you need to tell him what you're doing now. You can't just do it on your own anymore. Make sense? I assume it does, or are you all F AFK? No, makes sense. Okay. Um, so, on the team wall, nothing's really changed. The only difference is now the, the team leader has to provide a report and a recommendation to the squad leader. So if he is engaged by, let's say, an enemy body team, two guys, then he can say, um, team, uh, team Alpha engaged by two times infantry, we are assaulting. And then the team leader can uh, can go off a flowchart he has and say, okay, then we'll let that team engage and I bring up uh, the second team uh, either as support or just uh, wait for team, one, uh, team Alpha to report all clear. Um, if uh, and then if um, you feel like you can be in the base of fire, you stay in the base of fire and you report. Uh, squad lead, this is Alpha. I am uh, I'm engaged by enemy enemy squad sized force. I am suppressing and staying in base of fire. Then the squad leader can say can can figure out. Okay, if the enemy is squad sized, I can't assault them, but I can suppress them. So I'm going to bring up up uh, Team Bravo to. Um, to help suppressing, and then I'm going to report to platoon lead that, uh, that I'm in, in base of fire position and I'm engaging uh, an, an enemy squad, suppressing that, and then the platoon leader can do something about setting another squad on the flanks and assault, for instance. Um, yes, so what's important here uh, with your teams is you don't just act um, Im immediately all time shoot, and that's why I have two teams. So, for instance, if you go contact front, you don't always just run up on the on that team's uh, right of the flank and start this pressing as well, because that front team might be able to suppress on their own, and then there's no reason to get tied down in a base of fire position when you could just when the squad leader can just say immediately team two, uh, flank right and assault. Okay, then team two can just immediately flank right and assault instead of uh, instead of getting tied down in the base of fire position. But it, this depends on uh, speed and accuracy. So if you're not fast enough with your reports, then uh, then this this doesn't happen, and you all end up uh, squad line, uh, three guys that, uh, three guys wounded and crying for help uh, to the platoon leader. Oh, I'm talking fast today. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Just be aware that it's a lot of information in short time, so you need yes. to adjust it. Yes, it's mostly for the, as I said, it's mostly for the squad leaders. It's just yeah. nice that you guys know it. And my most important point here is, in the teams, wait for your team leader to tell you what to do. And team leaders, wait for your squad leader to tell you what to do, if for a short while anyway. If he doesn't immediately tell you what to do, then just call squad leader orders, and then stand by. If he doesn't answer, he might be dead or wounded. Okay. T uh, Alpha team leader is now in command. Alpha team leader says what uh, he wants the Bravo team leader to do. Okay. Um, yeah, the rest is this is just for uh, squad leaders. So uh, now we've talked about um, uh, the different actions on a contact, and they're pretty much the same in in a squad as in a fire team. One difference is that since we have two fire teams, self-contained fighting units. Then the squad leader has a more maneuverable freedom than he has with the 
what just one uh, than he, than what just one fire team has. So he can move the teams over longer distances and still keep the uh, keep the enemy suppressed, and he can do more uh, more different maneuvers than one team can. And he uh, will also sometimes have the platoon to call on, so he can do even more maneuvers. Um, this requires the um, the squad leaders to. Um, check. I have forgotten something. So this will require the squad leaders to focus on uh, on teams. A lot of squad leaders tend to run over and say, uh, "Rifleman that way, bravo, uh, uh, AR that way, and shit." But that's not that job. That job is to tell the team leader what he wants them to do. Um, again, I'm just gonna go quickly over. If you get wounded, then that's the same as fire team level. As much as possible, you handle that within your fire team. Battle body aid, uh, self aid, uh, whatever you can as much as possible within your team. If you have too many wounded to handle, then you report up to squad leader. We are we're combat ineffective at this point. We need uh, we need the medical support and uh, and fire support. Okay, squad leader, uh, squad leader will deal with that then. Um, yes, that's about it. Um, Yes. The rest is um, for the squad leaders. Um, just uh, how uh, Lockstad looks, how Sidrep looks, and uh, I haven't decided yet what kind of uh, contact report format I want. If I want the uh, salute or salsa, I'm probably gonna end up with salsa. Um, do you guys need to know what that is? Yeah, I do. Probably. Salsa is um, salute is an old. Uh, Format for reporting uh, context, saying that the contact size, the contact activity, the contact location, uh, what kind of uniform or special marks does the contact have, what time was the contact uh, observed or what uh, or uh, or fought, and what kind of equipment did they carry. That's not, um, but that's not that useful for platoon level comms because. Well, I don't give a fuck what kind of you know, if the uh, if the guards or if the conscripts or whatever, we're still pretty much going to do the same thing. So we're sizing it down to something called SALTA for me as format, and SALTA is um, still size, enemy activity, enemy location, and time um, when it is. The final A is just um, what is our friendly activity. So you give a contact report, you say one times enemy squad uh, suppressing my position, they are at grid 064, 057, time now, I am suppressing uh, I am suppressing their position, request support. So it's size, activity, location, time, and action? You could say that. Yeah, I think it's, action it's actually, would be a better actually, term for the last A. You could do that, if, you, if that's easier for you. Um, it gets me the same kind of info. But the official line is actually size, uh, enemy activity, location, time, and friendly activity. But yeah, you could actually call it last one action if you want to. But it's friendly. Yeah. And then, um, uh, finally, one report that, uh, that we love here is Ace Report. That's just uh, ammo casualties equipment, reported in colors green, yellow, red, and black. Um, I don't assume you have any questions on those. Nope. Okay, if there's no questions, then uh, that's pretty much it. How much time did I use? Oh, I was, I was fast this time. Um, God had Pavel yeah. asked about PIR reports. Ah, uh, uh, priority intelligence requ uh, requirements. I assume you're talking about if you are in a recon unit and you have to um, send the uh, intel to uh, to uh, to a higher 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 element like a battalion, then you have intelligence uh, priority uh, intelligence. I assume, and uh, uh. then then you send, uh, say, okay, I want to t reports about tanks first. Okay, prioritize uh, tanks. It doesn't always apply to recon either. If you spot like specific things that are important, like say you're on a, uh, you have a, a vehicle patrol coming through, and you spot contacts with RPGs or any kind of AT, you're gonna want to report that as a PIR. 
Also, uh, like enemy machine gun emplacements, stuff like that is PIR. Okay. And that was 